So Sotora is a company that actually are, we are a global company and basically our mission is to make the formal verification standard in DeFi, maybe perhaps in other domain, but in DeFi the use case is, is very obvious. And actually when we say formal verification, many people mean different things. But we usually mean here formal specification. It means that your code has formal requirement about what it's supposed to do. And then, and this is something that we write, sometimes our customer write, sometimes people from outside write, sometimes auditor write, and the auditor review that. And then there are tooling to check the specification and to check the code. And this is what we are doing. We have built one tool that you can see today and more, more tools are coming. And uh, actually next month there will be another tool which is coming. So more tools are coming. So as I said, I already mentioned that static analysis, the theory of static analysis is called abstract interpretation. How many of you heard about abstract interpretation? Maybe you can raise your hand. Okay, very few, yeah, good. So abstract interpretation is intuitively, this is the idea of sort of, you almost like you run your program, but instead of running the program on the actual state, you run it on some kind of a representation of the state. And this representation captures sets of states. So you, you thank you. So it captures sets of states. And the idea is that you, because of that, you can actually prove some properties about your program. And abstract interpretation is a, 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 a technique that has been uh, in, uh, implemented, industrialized. In particular, there is company Absint, which is in Germany. And it's actually taking the ideas from here, from a call normal per year, and implementing them in a tool that analyzes C code. It's used actually to check Airbus and other things. And there are other tools which are different than, than the astray, maybe not as, uh, maybe a bit more scalable with different kind of precision. For example, Coverity is a tool which was, it was a startup which was acquired by Synopsys. Veracode is a very, very good tool for analyzing the bytecode. And in the area of blockchain, the, one of the most known tool is Slither. Uh, how many of you know about Slither maybe? Oh, fantastic. So Slither is a static analysis tool implemented by 12bit and it checks the code to, to find some properties. So here is the output of a Slither on a very, very simple code that you can find in our website. It's a bank account. It's a bank account, very, very simple code with deposit and withdraw. What you can see in this is that there are many, many red lines and the red lines, they, they indicate vulnerabilities or hazards they indicate potential problems in this code. Do you want to guess how many of them are real? Anybody here who has experience with Slither? Or? So actually, unfortunately, none of them are real. So unfortunately, nine of these errors are real. And this is actually, uh, maybe it is a small program, but this is part of the problem of using static analysis. And in fact, static analysis has two kinds of problems. One, which is tools like Slither has, which are missing errors. This means the tool actually, you pass the checks, but still you are getting, after you pass the checks, you still errors in your code. And the other one, this is what you've seen in the previous slide, you have seen that actually there, there are cases that the errors that are reported by the tool are actually not real. But in fact, these are, known problems and the community, uh, both research and industry, have struggled and, and tried to develop tools to improve it and things have been improved. But in fact, that's not the end of the story. The most interesting fact, and this is our experience in Statora, and it's in line with experience of the experience of the major companies trying to, apply, to deploy static analysis, that the problem of static analysis is not no generic solution for code. Because what happened, most of the interesting bugs that happen, they happen in a particular scenario, which is actually has to do with the meaning of the code. So even a, a property, like a simple property, it actually doesn't mean there is a bug. There is actually interesting thing that you have to know about your code. 
And in order to find a security violation, you need to actually know something about your code. So, so Torah, this is the tool that you're going to listen hear about in the in the next three days. It's a tool that actually the human is in the loop. It's not a, an automatic static analysis. You have the static analysis. You take the code. It takes the code, but it also takes the requirement. It takes your environment. It takes your expected behavior. And this is actually the, the power of this tool, that you get these invariants. And then these invariants, you can formally verify them, which increases your confidence in the code. But more interestingly, you can find rare, potentially rare violation of the invariant. So you will find, it will find for you a bug in the, in the code. And this bug is a bug which is very, very hard to find by human. So you would write these invariant and then the tool, and because the tool is exhaustive, the tool will be able to automatically identify a violation of the environment. This violation is a violation which is rare, and it can be actually happens after many, many iterations. And we will talk about it and we will see how, how is it doing, how the tool is doing it. But, of course, since we are talking about a problem which is a computationally hard problem in computer science, which means it's undecidable, it means the computer cannot always prove that the environment is maintained. So our tool fails. And our tool, our tool, the way our tool fails, there are no, not false positive or false negative, but the idea is there is a timeout. You run the tool, and after a long time, the tool does not give you a conclusive answer. This is, of course, not good, and there are ways around it. We are working around it. We are building other tools. Also, the user can help. For example, if you can, if you can make more, your code more modular, if you can write procedure summaries, it will help us. The more your code is modular, it's easier to verify. So you can help us. And of course, this is a work for you. And you can also simplify the code. For example, you assume that there are no interest rate in your code. So you can simplify your code. If it finds a bug, it's great. If it doesn't find a bug, it may be either that the code is correct or maybe that you made too many simplifying assumptions. So the way the tool is, is uh, integrated into your build, it's like a, it's a developer's tool. And the idea is it, it, this integrate into CI, software like Git or Circle. And every time you change the code, assuming that the environment are the same, you, you actually run the tool. And every time you, you change the code, you run the tool again. And it's integrated into your CI. You can call it on the cloud. And basically, every time the, we make sure that every time you upgrade the code, the code remains correct. So maybe the most thing that you can get from this workshop, and I think actually from formal verification, even if you are not a user of the tool, is the idea of an environment. And the idea of an environment, and we, you're going to hear about it many times in these three days, it's a very, very interesting concept. And, and again, you can think about it like going back to Aristo, which says that the whole is equal to the sum of the parts. But in the context of code, it's very, very interesting. And one of the giants of computer science, Dijkstra, actually sort of coined the fact that you have to have environment, and environment is everything. And actually, interesting environment about the code is actually a very, very useful thing. Because you, if you think in terms of environment, it's actually crystallize your thinking. And we will see in, this, in these weeks, you can see invariants. And if you work with Sertora, you're going to write invariants. And you will write invariants for Ave. And you will write invariants for other things. So maybe take a very simple invariant, ERC20. The, basically, you say that the total is equal to the sum of the balance. That's a very, very simple property. But even this simple property, it is not actually checked by the compiler. So believe it or not, there are actually code and there are mistakes that actually violate this environment. If we think about the bank, the, the bank has to have enough money. And you go back to the Celsius case. So that's actually a big, solvency is a very interesting environment. And in this workshop, you're going to hear a lot about solvency. One of the things that we worry the most in cryptocurrency is solvency. These are cases that they are, the code is broken in a way that actually 
uh, you break the solvency. And tools like Sertora, what we are trying to do, we are trying to exactly find these solvency issues before the code is deployed. Another type of invariant, and I think you listen about it, uh, 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 you will uh, hear about it in the course, in the workshop, is liquidity invariant. So basically you have several tokens, say two tokens, and their multiplication is constant. Okay, so the token A and token B, the multiplication is constant. And you can execute operation like deposit, withdraw, but you maintain the fact that the, 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 product, the product is constant. And maybe uh, another property, if you have token A and token B, if one of them is zero, then the, the product is zero. Or maybe another property that says that if, if, if one of them is zero, the second one is also zero. So these are kind of invariants that you can write in our tool. You will see it, and our tool either give you a proof for that, or more interestingly, it finds a rare behavior of the code that violates that. So you can think of our tool as some kind of a very, very expensive, very precise QA tool. So maybe a very, very simple example. You see this is a transfer. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you have seen it. You transfer from one code to another. You require that you have enough money. And basically we, sh we show that the sum of the balance uh, remain uh, the same. So it actually shows you that the total value remains the same. So this is a kind of properties or environment that you can prove with our tool. So you get this proof. And if you have another example, I guess, yeah, it sounds like the, the problem is that actually the code is not, it's, it, it's, it was supposed to show us a, bu a bug, but it actually there is no bug here. There is uh, but the idea is if you write a code with a bug, it actually, it will, it will, uh, it will uh, uh, basically find the bug and you will see later, actually. So uh, I guess tomorrow, Thomas Bernardi will explain to you how the tool is working. The tool actually implements a sophisticated, uh, clever uh, uh, um, uh, basically chain of tools. And actually, they, because this problem is computationally hard, the, the, the tool is actually trying to implement many, many techniques that sidestep the computational complexity. So first you see the compiler. I don't, I, I don't have a pointer, but uh, you can see the, uh, first there is the compiler, and uh, it takes the solidity, and of course that's not ours, and go into the EVM. And then our tool analyzes the EVM. And the EVM is a fairly complex code. And there's a lot of things in, the, in this uh, EVM code. So in fact, it's very, very hard for our tool and for many tools to analyze this code. So we have to do something. So the first thing that we do, we decompile the code. We basically, uh, the, the EVM is a stack machine. So we basically find a bound on the stack and actually decompile it and have our own internal representation, which we call TAC. And then we simplify the TAC. We apply these abstract interpretation techniques, we apply all these things that were developed here in order to simplify the TAC. For example, if you have load and store, we recover type information. So this is actually a very, very clever part of our tool. And actually, this, this is, by the way, how we find many, many bugs in the Solidity compiler itself because we are enforcing some invariant about how the EVM code behaves. And if the compiler generates an EVM code that violates our invariant, this means the compiler itself is wrong. And then we report it, and you will see in the Solidity team, they actually acknowledge it as a security error. And then from there on, we generate a mathematical formula. So in principle, our tool is actually a compiler. It compiles your code into a mathematical formula. In the mathematical formula, it concisely describe, de describes all the behaviors that actually violate the code. It's, well, it's, it's probably mine, sorry. Yeah, no, it may be okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, 
it's basically find all the behaviors that violates the code. The, the, it violates that violates the environment. And and uh, uh, our tool also can generate a proof. If it actually doesn't find a violation, we can actually generate a mathematical proof which actually shows that the behavior is okay. Notice that this is actually not enumerating the behavior. It's actually showing that the code is, is actually true on all the inputs. So if you have a transaction on the integer, it will show that it's good on all the integers. And of course, it actually has some clever math underneath. So how is our tool compared with other methods? So there are a lot of other methods in this space and they are of course all useful. So I already mentioned static analysis. Also, I want to mention tools like fuzzing and testing, which we are also building. So these are of course useful and they're usually cheaper but what happened is that we cover more bugs with this technique, with our technique. So we have a better coverage. And another thing which is very, very useful is humans. And humans can come as, as reviewers, as auditing, as white hackers, as bug bounty. This is of course useful. And in fact, we are also offering now bug bounties for our invariant. Because even if we prove the code, if we didn't have the right invariant, it's still problematic. And this is actually something where we can inter interact with the, with the with the auditor. The auditor can find a bug in 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 our in our in the code, and that's because we haven't proved the right invariance. So maybe I just want to close here. I I don't want to have too much. It's basically the welcome, and you'll get a lot of things, and you'll see many bugs, and you can actually, if you want to see, in addition to here, there are actually our customers like. Trust token, Maker actually found a four-year bug and they wrote a blog about it. So we, I'm going to hear, basically you will hear here from our fantastic team many, many things about the code. I want to give you a little bit like kind of a summary of this field. So formal verification is, I've been around, I don't know if you know, the first paper about formal verification is by Turing. So formal verification is probably one of the most ancient things in computer science. And many, many people, I mean, there's a joke that says that formal verification also is the future of computer science, always was, always will be. So, so the idea is this is a field that actually, in fact, the smart contract re revolutionized this and re revolved it. And the, one of the myths in formal verification is actually that formal verification is about finding proofs. But in fact, one of the cases that people apply formal verification is to verify hardware. And there they have found something that we are finding too, that the most useful application of formal verification is actually finding these rare bugs. And this is actually what this tool is doing. So in addition to finding proof, it's finding the bugs. The other myth is the computational power, the computational complexity. The computational complexity of formal verification is of course very hard. But what we think that in addition, writing invariant is also very hard. And that's actually where we are, we are helping, and this is actually what we hope that you can learn during this, uh, these two days. Uh, the other thing that unfortunately will not be explained here because we are not going very technical, but formal verification is a beautiful research area because what happened is that you can do many, many things that sidestep the complexity. And Sertora is already implementing them. Many of them, they come from old ideas in academia, and many of them, we are actually coming with new ideas. And maybe the other thing that we want to say is that modularity is a key here. If you want to analyze huge code, which is not modular, tools like Sertora will be, have very hard time. So if you run Sertora on Microsoft Word, it will never, it will never finish. So we want to make mod the code either small or modular. And the, the, the last one is that uh, basically uh, 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 formal verification is actually a one-time thing. You can think on that's actually where people use interactive term provers. How many of you know of interactive term provers? Okay, so it's like one or two. So, inter so there are a lot of very, very good interactive to uh, uh, term provers in the, in the in, uh, for example, a tool like K, to like Quark, to like Isabel, to like Hope, Miranda. So all of these tools, they basically the human is in the loop 
And actually the human not only write the invariant, the human also does the proof steps. And you usually start from a high level code and you derive automatically the full implementation. That's not what Sertora does, that's something else. The, the beauty of, of interactive term prover that people have done full operating system, like there is a cell for a team in Australia that were basically were able to prove a full operating system. So basically, and it's actually a useful operating system. And also not far from here, Xavier, Le, uh, uh, Xavier Leroy, he actually proved something like a C compiler to be correct with Coq. Coq is a very, very useful tool actually developing here in France. It's a very useful tool of tool. So this is very nice that it was proved, this Coq compiler. But it, it, the, this version, which was proved by in 10 years, it's actually one version of the compiler. Okay, so if you take another version of the compiler, it's another 10 years. Okay, so this is not what we are trying to do. This is a very, very ambitious. Instead, what we are trying to do, we are trying to prove a method that actually integrates into your CI and actually make this verification, formal verification, automatic or at least as automatic as we can, okay? So we, we, are, we, we basically